Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. Reading today from Tim and Kathy Keller's The Songs of Jesus. And uh, it's a daily devotional uh, based upon the Psalms. And it's just so uh, rich, deep, so many uh, wonderful things to say about the book of Psalms, of course, how um, every single human emotion is on display in the Psalms and how the, the, the Psalter, as it's called, the book of Psalms, sits right in the middle of our Bibles. And um, 150 of these ancient songs by a variety of different composers, although King David, of course, wrote probably you know, half of them or r- roughly right around there. I'm reading today uh, from the Keller's uh, book, The Songs of Jesus, because, of course, Jesus would have been one who would sing the ancient psalms uh, as a first century Jewish man. Um, here, uh, in this particular selection in the Keller's book, uh, we have uh, Psalm 104, the first four verses of it anyway, and the Keller's just offer a, a short reflection on it, and then a prayer, and that will be our devotion for today, okay? So first, uh, let me read the first four verses of Psalm 104. If you happen to have a Bible and you want to look there, you can. Um, This ties in so naturally uh, with an event that we call the transfiguration of Jesus. Uh, We read about that in uh, Matthew 17, Mark chapter 9, and Luke chapter 9 as well and uh, recently have, uh, have been reflecting upon that. But here's how Psalm 104 goes. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. And so you get this beautiful, poetic, uh, exclamatory you know, description of how great the Lord is. Um, how how God is is uh, clothed with splendor and majesty, as I say, reminding me a bit of that transfiguration of Jesus. Um, but let's see what the Kellers have to say here about Psalm 104, the splendor of light. Psalm 104 is a meditation on the wonders of creation and the wonderful creator behind it. Unlike in Eastern mysticism, we see here a God who is personal and distinct from his creation, yet who is not in any way remote from it. And so it's not like uh, sort of the ideas uh, uh, put forward in, in the system of belief called deism, where, yeah, there's a God who exists, but he's a distant deity, maybe created the universe, drop kicked it over the back fence uh, and uh, of reality somehow and just doesn't engage with it at all. No, Psalm 104 uh, shows how the Lord is engaged with his creation and if so, uh, with you and with me as well. And so it's unlike the Eastern mysticism idea, here we see a God who's personal and distinct apart from his creation, yet who is not in any way remote or removed from it. I like this. The imagery of garment, uh, palace, and chariot conveys that nature is filled with God's energy and presence Hence the awe and respect that are due the natural world. And in other words, you don't, you don't have this sort of platonic dualism where the material world is evil and filthy and, and, and meaningless and, and or to be avoided. And the only thing that matters is the immaterial world. That's not the way the Christian faith is. That's not the way biblical thinking is at all. This world matters. 
your body, my body, these, these vessels God has given us, these matter and they're a part of who we are. They're not just something we live in. These bodies are part of who we are. So I love uh, the way the Kellers have pointed this out from Psalm 104, that the Lord creator is distinct from his creation, but he's engaged with his creation and he created it and he loves his creation. This is really beautiful. His energy and presence uh, uh, fill throughout the natural world. And as our dazzled eyes cannot take in the brilliance of light, in other words, we can't just look directly at the sun, but we need the sun because by it we see everything else. So as our dazzled eyes cannot take in the brilliance of light, so we must bow before and praise the God um, is and that he because he is more powerful and glorious than our imaginations can comprehend. In other words, very much like physical light in that in that regard. Um, just because we don't have the capacity to see and fully comprehend God uh, doesn't mean we can't see the impact of God's power or creativity or His love uh, for us. This is really great. I mean try that last little sentence again. The imagery of garment, palace, and chariot conveys that nature is filled with God's energy and presence, hence the awe and respect that are due the natural world. And as our dazzled eyes cannot take in the brilliance of light, so we must bow before and praise the God who is more powerful and glorious than our imaginations can comprehend. Hmm. All praise we would render, O oh, help us to see, tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. The killers closing with that quote from that beautiful uh, poetic line there from that ancient, uh, from that hymn. I love this. One more time, uh, the four verses. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Uh, other words uh, like glory might uh, fit in there as well. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. You see how the Lord is engaged with his creation. He designed his creation and he uses his creation to point us back to him, to how powerful he is, how creative he is, how engaged he is. Um, and how much he wants us to know him by making all of this visible to us, audible to us, uh, sensor, you know, with our senses, we can feel the wind. We can't see it, but we can surely feel it. We can see the effects of it. And so as the Keller so wonderfully point out, um, we've got to bow before and praise the God who is more powerful and glorious than our imaginations can even comprehend. And yet, he accommodates when he communicates to us through images like this, poetic images in the Psalms. He accommodates to us so that he can, that he can inspire us to be able to uh, grow in faith and trust and hope in the God who is actually there. Well, the Kellers close with this uh, lovely short prayer, and I'll make that our prayer for today as well. Lord, I often find both your words and your ways hard to fathom. My self-justifying heart instinctively tends to put the blame on you. Oh, help me to see that my real problem is the weakness of my spiritual eyes, which cannot take in your great light. Strengthen my spiritual sight so I can take more of you in. Amen. Amen. Hope you have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. 
For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.